Welcome to the SES Lord of Liberty. I have gathered you here to report on the events of the war effort over the course of April. Through this analysis, we hope to gain wisdom on how to better deliver freedom throughout the galaxy. In late March, interrogators had discovered an automaton plan they called the Reclamation, and it detailed a coming assault towards super-Earth of unprecedented scale. The Helldivers were engaged in a multi-phase major order. Operation Swift Disassembly involved four phases, and two phases had already passed by April's start. Towards the end of March, Helldivers achieved the successful liberation of Troost by opening the supply line through Ustotu and Vandalon IV to complete the first phase. This involved decommissioning a long-range comms array that was broadcasting into deep space outside the galaxy's frontier. Helldivers failed the second phase as the automatons had a sizable production facility on Tibet, and the bots were expanding its capabilities. To reach Tibet, the Legion of Liberation first had to go through Eubania. With the major order focused near Malevolon Creek, the Legion of Liberation was divided in their efforts and the automatons took advantage of this division. The bots had increased their production on Tibet and were amassing troops from the many retreat maneuvers forced by the Helldivers. The automatons used this increase in numbers to flank the fleet by attacking Dropnir to escape the kill box surrounding their forces. They were successful in claiming Dropnir, which severed the supply chain to Ubania and Tibet. The Helldivers dug in and retook Dropnir with only half a day left on the major order, with Ubania retaining a 83% liberation status. Ubania quickly fell to freedom's inevitable truth, and the fleet moved on to Tibet to try and fulfill High Command's major order. This brings us to the 1st of April and the supply chain being opened to Tibet. At this point, Tibet, Malevolon Creek, Durgan, and Maya were the last four planets the automatons maintained their tyrannical reign. With the Helldivers' forces still divided, the major order had failed. High Command shifted their focus to liberating Melavalon Creek, which had already achieved a 90% liberation rate by the overdetermined Creekers. Within a few hours, Melavalon Creek was claimed for Super Earth, and the bots had launched a counterattack on both Ubania and Melavalon Creek. Phase 3 of Operation Disassembly involved holding Malevolon Creek, Dropnir, and Ubania. High Command calculated that the bots could maintain this tyranny for up to two days, and Helldivers had been ordered to withstand their onslaught to maintain the Galactic Bulwark. Success in this endeavor would ensure that the fleet could progress forward and wipe out the automatons on the last three planets they held. On the 2nd of April, Automatons revealed an evolution of tyranny they had been developing on Tibet. Across every battlefield, they deployed two new forms of freedom-hating steel. The first was the gunship. This aerial tyrannist was fabricated in a tall tower that was impervious to damage to all except a hell bomb. Eliminating the fabricator required the hell divers to maintain anti-air capabilities across their team and coordinate their attacks to prevent the gunships from owning the sky. Failure to do so resulted in the loss of the mission as Helldivers would be unable to progress forward under their aerial assaults. The second was the Factory Strider. This walking fabricator is well fortified, produced devastators across the battlefield, and was equipped with a cannon and two machine guns. Its large stride allowed it to cover ground quickly. Just one factory strider was difficult to deal with, and Helldivers would unleash all of Liberty's gifts of freedom to free these tyrannists from their pre-programmed hate. At this time, both variations were rare and only found on the most difficult battlefields. On the 3rd of April, Helldivers successfully maintained the galactic bulwark on Melavalon Creek, Ubania, and Dropnir. Despite this, the automatons retreated and attempted to flee the sector through Vandalon IV. On average, only 50,000 Helldivers over the course of the defense participated at one time, while the remaining Liberators focused on Tibet, and over 30% of the fleet departed the automaton front to stomp some bugs and defend Astanu from reinfestation. Despite the lack of reinforcements, the heroes at Vandalon IV fought well into the night 
and defended the snowy planet on the 4th of April around 3 a.m. EST, with under an hour left to spare. Their bravery resounds throughout managed democracy as one of the single most important defenses in the Second Galactic War. Their victory ensured the automatons remained cornered in the Severan Sector and guaranteed the possibility of their annihilation. Four hours later, High Command gave the order for Phase 4 to eliminate the automaton menace. Tibbet, Durgan, and Maya were fated for liberation, and the Helldivers went to work with the bulk of the force descending upon Maya to prevent the bots from trying to escape once more. After a day and a half of heavy combat, the Helldivers erased all presence of the automatons from Maya's barren land and kept the bots contained to Durgan and Tibbet. They celebrated their liberation on April 5th, around 7.30 p.m. The fleet then rallied upon Tibbet, smelling the oil in the water they picked up momentum. Through the dense jungles, the Helldivers continued to spread the truth of freedom, and on April 6th, around 10.30 p.m., almost 190,000 Helldivers rejoiced in victory. Fueled by the assured annihilation of the automatons, the Legion of Liberty dove upon Durgan and laid waste to the automatons that remained. No miraculous force of tyranny could save the bots as fleet admirals continued to spread the truth that no matter where tyranny hides, they will find it and deliver it a fresh cup of liberty. By the end of the battle, over 350,000 Helldivers were warring under the blessings of Lady Liberty and the fleet annihilated the automatons on Sunday, April 7th, just before 4 p.m. This moment may forever be known as the height of the Galactic War and was the fleet's first taste of real victory. The Helldivers had done their part to the best of their ability and found an unseen unity at the end. High Command took advantage of this unity and gave the Helldivers a vacation on the Terminid front to secure E-710 to restock the reserves that were spent in the automaton war effort. Helldivers had 36 hours to liberate Hellmire, Estanu, and Crimseka to establish new E-710 harvesting farms where the Terminids would be given a larger berth to wander and would be enriched with new state-of-the-art nutritional supplements developed by Super Earth's super scientists. After being hardened by automaton combat, Super Earth's fleet of freedom dove upon Estanu and made quick work of the bugs. The Helldivers had liberated all three worlds and fulfilled High Command's major order by 7 p.m. on April 8. The moments that followed the completion of that major order would be the last moments of peace and prosperity the Helldivers would know throughout the rest of April. Just over 12 hours later, an alert rang out through the fleet. The automatons had hidden the bulk of their fleet beyond the galactic frontier and launched an assault of epic proportions on the Valdis sector. Being used to utilizing the Helldivers to control the galaxy, Super Earth officials were ill-prepared to defend against this attack. Many trillions of souls were lost as the automatons claimed Merak, Aurora Bay, Merga 4, Cyberstan, Mechbuda, Vindemitarix Prime, Chuhe, and Penta. High Command ordered the Helldivers to succeed in five defense efforts against the automaton assault to end their momentum through a continued war of attrition. Helldivers spent almost 24 hours fighting back the automatons and succeeded in the defense of Menkent. The war that ensued on that fiery plane was a defining moment for many Helldivers, and the Infernos will forever reside in the minds of the survivors of that battle. In the hours that followed, the automatons claimed Lassath and Chort Bay. From their position of strategic strength, they launched new attacks on Menkent, Vernon Wells, and Matar Bay. The fleet regrouped on Vernon Wells to prevent the automatons from progressing towards Super-Earth and were initially successful in this endeavor. However, the automatons had claimed Menkent and Matar Bay while the Freedom Fighters were under siege. From Matar Bay, the automatons spread to Marfark and Martal, claiming those worlds for tyranny. By the morning of April 12th, the Helldivers had only succeeded in three defense campaigns and halted the automatons at Vernon Wells. To halt the automaton's spread of tyranny, High Command ordered the Helldivers to liberate Menkent and Lesoth from automaton control. 
CAF engineers were to construct an orbital defense system on the Menkant line to halt the bots from utilizing that supply line. The strategic theory was that the Hell Divers could hold Matar Bay for a moment of respite and reclaim Martal and Marfark to draw a new galactic bulwark across the western region of space. The Hell Divers were given four days to complete the order and, through many counterattacks, were successful in granting freedom to the Menkent Line. On April 16th, the engineers went to work to erect the orbital defense system, a critical point in Super Earth's defense effort. Automatons surged through Matar Bay and set every available freedom-hating unit they had upon Marfark to break through Super Earth's bulwark. Against waves of enemies, the Helldivers slowly liberated Marfark and held the bots at bay. Once the liberation of Marfark was established, the automaton wave ceased, and the Helldivers waited in anticipation for a counterattack that never came. With the order complete, High Command issued a new major order on April 18th to refuel the fleet's fuel reserves. This would be the fleet's first return to the Terminid front under a major order since April 7th for the establishment of the new E-710 farms. Hell divers were ordered to cull 2 billion bugs for E-710 processing and were given 24 hours to complete the order. However, the Hell Divers saw this as a challenge or a vacation from the bots and completed the order in just 12 hours. With the Menkent line established and the fleet's fuel reserve topped off, the Hell Divers lingered in the calm before the storm as they waited for new orders from High Command. On the morning of April 19th, the storm descended upon the Freedom Fighters. Massive attacks, seemingly coordinated, assaulted Liberty on both the Terminid and the Automaton front. High Command issued orders to withstand the attacks and successfully defend ten planets during this time. The Automatons broke through the Menkent line, and the engineers behind the construction of the orbital defense system were taken into custody to be interrogated for suspected dissident activity. The defense efforts went on for five days with many failures that allowed the automatons to break through our supply lines and spread further out into the galaxy. By the end of the assault, the war map stood as follows. Automatons had expanded and were held at bay to maintain footholds on Mesa, Chupesa 4, Charbal 7, Menkent, and Lasalth. After the fallout from the assaults had settled, High Command gave a choice in the form of a major order. Hell Divers were told about surviving super citizens and two possible experimental weapons that were present on two planets in the Lakai sector. Information was relayed that the survivors could only hold out for three days at most, and failure to liberate the planets in time would result in the loss of access to the weapons systems. They stated, likely only the citizens and weaponry on the first planet liberated will be saved. Through channels off the fleet's network, High Command then announced the identity of the weapons. The RL-77 airburst rocket launcher was located on Penta and Helldivers would have to liberate Lesath to reach the survivors in time. Chuhi was developing MD-17 anti-tank mines, and the Helldivers would have to liberate Menkent to free Chuhi of tyranny to retrieve the mines. Many Hell Divers chose to avoid the fires of Menkent and liberate Lesoth in pursuit of the rocket launcher, leaving a large portion of the fleet divided. Despite this division, the Hell Divers reached Penta and successfully liberated the world to claim the airburst rocket launcher and save 90% of the super citizens that were waiting to be saved. After this liberation effort, only 6% of the Hell Divers descended upon Menkent to try and reach Chuhei in time. 27% were wasting their time to liberate Chort Bay, and 36% of the fleet journeyed to the Terminid front, ignoring the major order. This means that, at this time, 94% of the Helldivers were participating in dissident activity. High Command did not acknowledge this, and the fallout of division can be seen across all official and non-official platforms of communications around Super Earth's galaxy. After this order, the Ministry of Defense tweaked the Hell Divers' arsenal under order from High Command. It's believed this may have been a punishment to dissidents and rewards to the faithful, creating more division in the galaxy. Shortly after, High Command was forced to refocus on the Terminid front.
The Terminid Front has seen attacks and defenses over April that has maintained the status quo of the Churn, a cycle of defense and re-liberations around Crimsica, Estanu, Fori Prime, and Osha Una. This cycle has been repeating itself since the TCS establishment in the Umlaut sector, with only brief breakouts into the Lestrade sector at Omicron. This brings us to the end of April. The Terminid containment system has failed. Terminids have developed a resistance to the termicide, and the Helldivers have been ordered to shut down the termicide towers to stop the rapid growth of bugs in the Umlaut sector. Meridia was the first to develop the mutations and experience a rapid growth of bug colonies, considered completely lost to liberty. Helldivers have an opportunity to prevent super colonies from developing on Fenrir 3, Irata Prime, and Turing. To sum up April, it started with victory and unity. Today we find ourselves often divided against the major order and the decisions of high command. We pray to Lady Liberty that the galaxy will begin to find stability and momentum in May. Thank you for staying tuned into Helldiver News and supporting this channel with your continued contributions with words of freedom and liberty. Would you like to know more? Chaos and the fray, Helldivers pave the way. With freedom as their guiding star, they push forward no matter how far. In the heart of the battle where danger flies, Helldivers are